welcome to Topper Talk, your number one Western Kentucky Athletics podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Moffitt, and I'm joined by co-host Tyler Bailey. Hilltopper Nation, whether it's happening on the hill or on the road, grab those red towels, stand up and cheer, because it's up next on Topper Talk. All right, and welcome back to another episode of Topper Talk Podcast. We do thank you for downloading and streaming, listening along with us. Um, as always, you can find us on Twitter at Topper underscore talk. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff to talk about, man. We're, we're going to talk about some WKU basketball, kind of recap the season and, and uh, whatever, you know, what has happened over the last, you know, call it 45 days, two months. Uh, obviously, there's been a lot of movement, a lot of stuff going on. As always, I've got co-host Tyler Bailey with me. Tyler, how you doing, man? Hey y'all! Welcome back, y'all. I'm doing pretty dang good. Uh, I'm ready to jump into this basketball podcast, so man. Yeah, like I said, we we've, we've got a lot to talk about. Obviously, a lot of stuff has has gone on since the um, end of the season. Um, so let's jump right in, it, man. Um, I think by now we all know that the basketball season ended um, in disappointing fashion. We lost. 75 to 51 uh, in the Conference USA semifinal second round uh, to eventual Final Four participant FAU. Um, you know, lost a game. You know, was never really in it. Just kind of got blown out by a really good FAU team that went on to prove that you know they were a, a solid, solid team, a matchup problem for a lot of teams. And um, you know, CSA was really good this year, um, but that did end our season. Uh, we ended just above 517 and 16 overall. We were sixth place in Conference USA. And then um, after the season ended, um, two days after that loss, Rick Stansberry in his exit interview with um, Todd Stewart decided to resign um, and citing health concerns and what was best for the program uh, moving forward. So, with his resignation, that ends his tenure of seven seasons. Um, over that seven seasons, we ended with a total record of 136 wins, 83 losses. Um, I, I guess, Tyler, before we move in anymore, um, you know, just what's your overall thoughts on kind of that abrupt end to the season, kind of a disappointing end, and, um, you know, and then just kind of a, a little bit of a surprising resignation, I guess you'd say. Kind of what's your thoughts on how everything played out there at the end of the season? Yeah, I was – well, I know that the fan base was starting to turn on him. It was it was evident. But with him citing, you know, health problems, it was uh, – you know, he missed the first, I think, nine games of the, uh, of the conference season. And, uh, I mean, that – I liked Stansbury as a coach or as a recruiter. I thought he was a great one, but the his coaching led some left something to be desired, and we'll talk about that later. I, or I will. I'm gonna th- throw that in. But you know, um, it, it the loss sucked, but then I guess losing a coach just what two days, a few days after. I mean, it sucked losing the FAU, but by golly, they were a team. So that's about it on that. Yeah, I mean, you know, it it was a disappointing end to a disappointing season just overall. What it wasn't even really a roller coaster, wasn't a lot of ups, or it was just downs mainly. Um, you know, like you said, Stansbury was out for an extended period with the health issues. Luke Frampton lost for the season, uh kind of on the tail end of the season. Uh D Hall, strength coordinator, uh was out for a while with some health issues. So just kind of a season with a lot of hope and a lot of potential coming in that never really played out to, I guess, where a lot of us, you know, expected it to be and wanted it to be. And, and quite frankly, where we had been for the majority of Stansbury tenure. So, um, yeah, I just, I want to look back and kind of recap on Stansbury's tenure here, man, the seven years, you know, although we never got to an NCAA tournament, you know, the ultimate goal for, you know, someone in our position is to make the tournament. You know, we want to get there and have a chance to win, have big upsets like FAU did this year. You know, they literally had a dream season this year. You know, maybe once in a lifetime. You know, who knows? It's been a while since we've been there. Obviously, 73 for our Final Four run. Um, 
or 71 rather, excuse me. But um, yeah, I mean, um, let's just look back. Um, you know, one of the biggest and, and strongest pieces of Stansbury's tenure was his recruiting, like you mentioned. Um, and I just looked back over the roster, you know, off the top of my head and then just started combing through the seven years worth the roster and just looking at some of these names that we've had come on the hill and play here. Um, Josh Anderson, Tavion Hollingsworth, Darius Thompson, Dwight Kobe, Tolu Smith, Delano Banton, Mustafa Jung, Deshaun Murray, Charles Bassey, Carson Williams, Jordan Rawls, Cam Justice, Luke Frampton, uh, Davey McKnight, Jarius Hamilton, Jamarian Sharp, Christian Lander, Dante Allen, Emmanuel Acott. Um, you know, just tons of talent, a bunch of like a bunch of four star guys. Um, got some Mr. Kentucky basketballs mixed in there. Just so much talent. There was always excitement in the preseason before games were ever played. Um, and then we had a few guys that, you know, highly recruited, never made it to either never made it to campus or just never made it to games. Um, and really, I think there were big losses. And I think that turnover, that player attrition, um, just not being out of field, a consistent roster every year with returning players um, really kind of hurt us. Um, Mitchell Robinson kind of being a big guy. We all remember that saga of, of that five-star center committing to us, coming to campus, leaving, coming back, and then ultimately leaving again and deciding to work out for the NBA draft. Uh, and we know how he's doing, having a pretty good career so far for the Knicks. Uh, Jordan Brangers, a uh, sharpshooting guy from a, a JUCO down in Texas. I think he ended up having some eligibility issues and kind of got axed you know, right before um, you know, at the end of summer workouts before the season was going to be started. And then Trevlin Queen also, you know, was on the roster, was here practicing, and for whatever reason got dismissed from the team. And um, he's had a pretty good college career where he went and made it to the G League. And, and hey, he's seen some NBA time. So, um, and, and also looking down that list, you know, a lot of those guys were, tra- you know, people that we recruited as transfers in they weren't you know high school recruits not all those a a bunch of them were transfers from other schools to us and then several of those guys um like we mentioned earlier that roster turner were several of those guys transferred out you know the big ones um standing out to me um definitely delano banton uh and tolu smith uh delano's gone on to be in the nba with the raptors Tolu had a really good college career at Mississippi State. I think he has one more year of eligibility. Um, not really sure where he's going to land, if he's going to stay there, go somewhere else. But, um, you know, then we've got a couple more guys as we get into this, you know, what's happened lately. Obviously, there's been a couple more guys transfer out, but we'll get to that um, here shortly. But, Tyler, what's your opinion, man, just on all this talent that we've had over the last seven years? Just four stars, five stars, just a ton of just in-state talent, even Mr. Kentucky basketball is just everywhere. Big time recruits from other P5 schools. You know, how, I guess, what's your view on just all this talent we've had and then to never be able to take that and use that talent and, and make it to the next step. Just what, what's your perspective on, I don't, I don't want to say wasting the talent because it was exciting, but just what's your take on just having that much talent here on the Hill for the last seven years? I mean, that is tough to have that much talent that, you know, all them stars come in and just fall flat. It is, I'm summing up, it's disappointing. But uh, I'm going to paraphrase uh, an old Buddhist saying, and uh, this is a trip of a thousand miles begins with smart money is always on Stansbury. You know, I've heard that multiple times throughout the, you know, on the Twitterverse, uh, or especially that last part. But, uh, and, you know, speaking of recruits, his first year, you know, Pancake Thompson, Junior LaMamba, you know, Darius Thompson, he had, I think, the second or third triple-double in WKU basketball against Marshall over there, you know, in 2016. I was 20. there. It was, it was fun. I was there. Oh, I, I bet it was. Uh, but, man, I mean, to come up short every year, you know, either lose it in the in the championship or you know semifinals quarterfinals it is it's just almost like a kick in the gut i mean you come in you're like ah dang we're good this year this is our year this is it and just to come up 
a layup short, you know, a, a free throw or a few free throws short. I mean, it's just tough, man. I mean, it, it, it really hurts. Yeah, I agree. And, and I want to touch on some of those victories because, you know, that was another big part of the, the Stansberry era was, man, we had a ton of big victories and several of those were, inside Ditto Arena, you know, able to get P5 guys to come into to Ditto and play us. Um, several more on the road, some neutral sites, but just going to run down uh, the ones I have listed. I think for the most part, they're in chronological order. Um, we beat number 18, Purdue, in 2017, uh, and that was the year we lost to Marshall in the CSA title game. Uh, we beat Boston College in the NIT that year. We beat USC, uh, Southern Cal in the NIT we beat Oklahoma State in the NIT before we lost to Utah. Um, then we beat West Virginia in 2018. Um, I was also there at that one. We beat Arkansas in 2018. I was there for that one. St. Mary's, there for that one. Wisconsin, I was there for that one. Um, then we lost to a very seasoned and veteran ODU squad uh, in the CSA title game that year. Um, 2019, we beat Arkansas again. And that 2020 Conference USA tourney was canceled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, moving forward into the 2021 season, we beat Memphis. Uh, then we beat Alabama. We lost to North Texas in the 2021 CSA title game. You know, a game where we just, I think we got behind a huge margin, 16, 17, 18 to zero before we decided to start scoring and, and made a good run at a comeback, but just ultimately fell short again, you know, three times in four years in the title game. And then we beat Ole Miss in 2021. We beat Louisville in 2021. But, man, just so many, just looking back at just so many incredible wins and just all the excitement that it, that always brought to the program and eyes on the program and just – exciting big plays and electric atmospheres and it was fun i mean say what you want to say we didn't make uh you know an ncaa tournament but that nit title you know semifinal run was special i mean that was a, a very favorite team of mine that justin johnson darius thompson dwight colby um you know in my opinion that team should have been at large at large ncaa team i would die on that hill said that I've got receipts for that but they weren't they went to the NIT and they kind of proved it man you know won a couple games in Diddle uh went to Oklahoma State Tavion Hollingsworth everybody remembers that Tavion getting fouled on the floor with that jersey popping showing that WKU man that boy he was a player when the lights were on that boy was a player um kind of all these games man Tyler what stands out to you and all these big games these big victories maybe the atmosphere you know what whatever you got to watch or attend you know, what are some of your recollections of some of these big wins or or even some of the heartbreaking losses? I know they're kind of tough to to reflect back on, but you know, we're kind of shutting the door on one era and we're about to turn the page onto another one. But looking back, you know, what what's your thought and your mindset looking back at all those big big wins and and hard losses? Well, you know, to quote Stansbury, you can't stay too high on the mountain, you can't stay too low in the valley, but them high points was just uh, amazing. You know, Purdue uh, in that neutral game site, uh, Wisconsin, the revenge game, because we got beat the year before third place in a bull crap foul. The, Mer the Merrick Nelson inbound charge flop uh, call. I remember it. I was listening to it on the radio, and I was livid at that. Uh, you know, it's always good to beat an in-state rival. You know, beat Louisville. Uh, I was there for Boston College whenever they played Diddle for the NIT. That was an amazing atmosphere. You know, he really brought people back, fans back to Diddle and, you know, had that Diddle magic, hashtag Diddle magic. Um, I remember watching the USC game and uh, uh, the Walton guy on, on call, you know, you can't pay no attention to him, but that game was, was awesome. Uh, I remember you're right. The OK State game, whenever Hollingsworth was popping that collar, you know, or <laughs> popping that jersey, that was uh, that was an amazing time. And uh, you know, uh, I think that 2018 really, if that was a team, if we had a team take us to the NCAA tournament, that was it. I mean, that team 
just blew people out the water. Arkansas, Wisconsin at home, like I said earlier, West Virginia. That team was rolling on everything. Uh, you know, it's always good to beat SEC, you know. Uh, Alabama, Arkansas, Ole Miss, stomping Ole Miss, really. Let's let's put it plainly. Uh, but, man, uh, the highs were just unbelievable. And uh, I guess the losses, the one from a fan perspective, the loss that stands out to me the most is when Lamonte Beard went up for that layup against Marshall mm. in the Conference USA tournament. It mm. hit every freaking part of that rim and then just – Bounced out. out. I was like, out. Yep. I was like, gosh, dang it. I mean, yep. He he makes that shot nine times out of ten. It popped out the one. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that's bad luck. Uh, just oh my gosh. Uh, and then I guess I mentioned it earlier, but from a, I just hate him perspective. That loss to Wisconsin in seventeen. You know, I I called that foul. Uh, bull crap, and I stand by that. Uh, I think his name was Davidson. I to this day I dislike that man with the with the burning passion. Uh, I mean, the I remember we was playing ODU. This is uh, we're playing ODU, and this loss hurt too. We got behind by like 20 something points in the first half. Um, I think it was playing there because I was watching on TV at Hilligan's and that, oh, I was, I was pissed at that game. Uh, I mean, that, that was, that was horrible, but yeah, the, the highs were good and the lows just major lows. Yeah, I agree 100%. And one thing you touched upon was some of those home atmospheres and really prior to, you know, the COVID pandemic hitting in march of 2020 it, you know one thing stands very preached for a long time was you know get buy a ticket get a ticket because there's gonna be a day when there's not gonna be many left at dill arena and we were getting to that point you know after the 18 season the 19 season and, and how good a 20 season we had you know we were going into that tournament you know potentially favorites to to take that title um but we were getting to a point where you know nearly every game was on a sellout watch um and kind of that excitement and the talent that we had was just incredible. And obviously, you know, the world shut down for a year, year and a half. It felt like two years, you know, conference tournament was canceled. Um, you know, things got weird with COVID procedures and just if games were going to be played or made up or whatever. But, you know, that excitement was there for a long time. Um, and kind of – we've gotten back to normal now over the last year plus two years. Um, it never kind of, we, we never got back to that. And we've had a couple back to back disappointing seasons and that kind of led us to where we are today and where we've been, you know, over the last month, month and a half. But, you know, we, we did have a good thing going and I don't, you know, I don't know if, if COVID really stopped that momentum or if it was going to happen regardless, um, just due to roster turnover or coaching deficiencies or, whatever it may be. Um, but yeah, that magic inside Diddle, you know, at the peak of it was just incredible and, and was really fun. Um, but moving forward, you know, on, uh, like we said, on 3-9, March 9th, the season ended with that lost FAU. On 3-11 uh, was when Stansbury had his exit interview with Todd Stewart and announced his resignation. Uh, Jeff Goodman tweeted it out. Todd Stewart and the WKU basketball count tweeted out. We have a change in leadership in our basketball program. Um, Stansbury has resigned, citing health reasons. I'm, I'm, I'm finger quoting because uh, what we know today is that might not have been the reason, but that was the reason given of health reasons is why he resigned. And in the best interest of the program, he resigned. So a coaching, a coaching search you know, was starting immediately on the 11th and immediately some, some big names started popping up. Um, some retreads, some names we've seen before, some people that were still coaching in the NCAA tournament because the tournament was going on. Um, but we heard names like Will Wade, you know, a guy that kind of has been out of coaching for a little bit because of some allegations and stuff at LSU that happened and, 
you know, quite frankly, stuff that's legal now, paying players. Um, was kind of the first hot big name that was out there. Uh, Darren Horn, who uh, we all know, has coached here before, played here uh, at Northern Kentucky currently, was the name brought up. Tom Crean, Preston Spradlin there at Moorhead State, and Steve Lutz at Texas A&M Corpus Christi. You know, those were kind of the the big names floated out there um, kind of from the get-go, from day one. And, you know, while this coaching search only took a week from, you know, 311 when he resigned to 318 when the next coach was named, man, that was the longest week of silence and mystery and who's interviewing and what's going on. And, you know, we had these three main contenders, Horn, Spradlin, and Lutz, that were still coaching uh, in the NCAA tournament. So it just felt like we were waiting for dominoes to fall before we could talk to whomever the main contenders were. Um, And then on March 18th, that kind of all came to an end uh, when Steve Lutz was officially announced as our head coach, the 16th head coach in WKU history from Texas A&M, Corpus Christi. He had been there as the head coach for the last two seasons, uh, had led them to the NCAA tournament two consecutive seasons, um, 47 and 23 record overall. Um, Just looking back, Tyler, man, at the coaching search and the resignation and and kind of all those names we heard floating out there and, and possibilities of who's here, who's interviewing, who are we interested in? You know, how was that week of just a whirlwind of not knowing and and getting your hopes up? You know, I, I will be on the the record of saying I had my hopes up for a Will Wade type guy. You know, I think that was a hire that I wish we could have made. Um, ultimately, we didn't, and I will be behind Steve Lutz 100%. But, man, the allure of that guy and his pedigree of recruiting, you know, I was excited for it. It didn't pan out. Um, but kind of what's your reflection on that week of just unknown and where we ended up, um, you know, with Steve Lutz? Well, I don't think I ever have checked Twitter as much as I did that week. I mean, I was always constantly refreshing it, going back, looking up articles, seeing who, you know, we was talking to. I'm I am happy with with Lutz. Uh, he does have a have a heck of a you know a pedigree from where he assistant coached at in the past. But uh, I, I was I was on the Will Wade train. I did not want Tom Crean at all. I don't like him. Uh, that goes back to him coaching Indiana. I I dislike that boy. Uh, but no, I was I was nervous because uh, I was like, man, well, we had to have a good hire here, and uh, I think we, I think we did it, and uh, I'll, I'll get into that later on. But I, I think we, I think we found the guy that could maybe get us back to the NCAA tournament because if he was able to do it, at Texas A and M Corpus Christi. Now, granted, the the challenge, the teams they play versus teams we play, vastly different. But I think he will be able to do it. Yeah, we'll see. Let uh, let's talk a little bit about Steve Lutz and his uh, resume, his pedigree, um, kind of where he's been, where he's came from, and uh, like I already mentioned, he two NCAA tournaments the last two years, forty seven and twenty three. Uh, before that, he was formerly an assistant at Purdue and at Creighton, uh, also at SMU, Stephen F. Austin. Garden City Community College, and Incarnate Word. You know, assistant coaching stops at all those places. Um, and honestly, he had a lot of high praise from uh, McDermott there at Creighton, um, coach at Purdue, Jeff Brom, um, just a lot of people with a lot of really good things to say about him um, and his ability to have an impact on a program, recruit high-level players, um, and help develop talent that is capable of winning a lot of games and, you know, Purdue's a really, really good, solid and consistent basketball program. Even if they, you know, have occasionally fallen short in the NCAA tournament and been upset, they're getting there. Um, Looking more at Steve Lutz, he did play college basketball. He played at range junior college and at Texas Lutheran from 1991 to 1995. So he has been a player, uh, jumped in as an assistant coach and quite frankly, has a lot of experience 
as an assistant coach. He's talked about, you know, all the stops he's been, his uh, initial presser. He said, you know, I'm not a talking guy. I'm a coaching guy. But, you know, he did kind of give us a rundown of all those places he's been, areas he's recruited, you know, you know especially with Purdue. He, he has recruited kind of this area, uh, even though he's been down in Texas lately uh, with Corpus Christi. Um, he he's a guy that knows his way around and and hopefully can recruit and you know, we are going to talk about that so um a lot of stuff has happened since we hired Steve Lutz and there's been a lot of player movement uh, kind of alluded to some of that earlier so looking at it um players that were on the roster last year that have hit the portal we have Jordan Rawls who is still undecided on a next location you have Davion McKnight, who has committed to Xavier. Jamarion Sharp has committed to Ole Miss. And Darius Miles and Elijah Huey are both undecided but have hit the portal um, and are transferring out. Um, and in that same amount of time, you know, we have added one recruit. Uh, that just happened a few days ago. We added Brandon Newman from Purdue. It's a six foot five shooting guard, former four star prospect. Um, and I'm not, I, I guess I, I want to approach this, this topic, I guess with a little bit of a caution and sensitivity and, and not say that there's need to panic, but, you know, early on it, it has felt like there has been maybe not a lot of success recruiting. You know, we've had a lot of outgoing guys, which is expected. There's a coaching change. Um, staff change, you know, the players that were here committed to play for Stansbury. Usually when a, a coaching change happens, usually a lot of players leave. And that's what we've seen. That's not a surprise. You know, all the guys that have left seeking greener pastures, whatever it may be. Um, that's fine. You know, I, I don't blame that at all. I guess for me right now, the, the more concerning part is we've had a lot of, I guess, uh, lures in the water. We've had a lot of, of line in the water, so to speak, uh, fishing for some talent in the portal. You know, over a thousand names in the portal. I think he got up to like 15, 1600. Um, we've had guys visit campus. We've had players from some assistant coaches that we've brought on board. We'll touch on them later. Um, we've had a lot of nibbles, you know, guys interest and we're interested in them. And, um, just hasn't been a lot of incoming transfers as of yet. Um, just outgoing transfers. Um, I'm not to the point. I know it's still early. There's still a lot of time between now and, you know, when we do need to have a full roster assembled. But there is there is some concern on my end, and I've, I've voiced it on Twitter. I've said, you know, it's not, we're not panicking. It's not alarm. You know, but there is does seem to be some patterns going where it just seems we're not closing on some recruits that we're interested in and, and focusing on, but there's still plenty of time. We're going to get guys that we can get. Um, you know, Brandon Newman from Purdue was a, a good solid pickup. Seems like he wasn't getting a ton of minutes at Purdue. Um, good size shooting guard probably has a lot of good talent that maybe just wasn't getting displayed there at Purdue with the, a different level of competition. Let's just, Call it what it is. Purdue's played in a tougher conference than what the new Conference USA is going to be going forward. So a guy like him is really going to have a chance to shine in our conference. Um, and I think there's bound to be more out there, several more out there that, you know, we're basically pitching starting positions in a lot of minutes at this point. So I know we'll, we will catch more fish, so to speak. You know, there's we will bring guys on. That's obviously going to happen. But – Tyler, what's your feel right now on just what's happened with the roster so far um, as far as all the transfers out and so far only bringing in, uh, you know, the one committed transfer and Brandon Newman from Purdue? What's your what's your thoughts so far on this process? Well, you know, uh, you see all these guys come in, you know, they were interested in and then a few days later you see that they've committed to somewhere else it to me that i don't want to say i'm alarmed just yet but it is kind of it's still early but it is kind of getting maybe we're just full because stansbury would always recruit you know i would have the new recruits in you know and signed them or, or at least have them committed but absolutely absolutely 
I think that's one reason why that my flag starting to raise a little bit on the worried side. But I mean, I saw a guy go to Marshall. I mean, come on, we can definitely recruit better than Marshall can. I, it's still, I'm, I still got a, a hatred for Marshall uh, from 2014. But, but Katie's gonna love that. Hey, he should. Uh, oh, you mean Marsha? Oh, you mean that school, that green school with the with the buffalo, whatever. Uh, but no, uh, I think one thing that we need to reload on right now, uh, well, two positions, post players and point guards. You know, our tallest player right now is Flu Jun at 6'11", followed by Marshall at 6'7". I mean, it, he did good this past year, Marshall did. But Flu, I'm – I'm just not sold on. Yes, we we went from Bassey to Sharp, and I would like a, another dominant big man down there in the post, you know, the post forward, center forward position. Um, I mean, and we still, Rawls, he could pull his name out of the transfer portal. I mean, he's he, tra- he came here, transferred away, then transferred back. I mean, who knows what he's going to do. Boomerang. Uh, <laughs> he really is. <laughs> I mean – we, we just need a, a floor general. The shooting guards, I feel like, you know, we got Landers and Allen and Newman. I believe we're we're good on, on shooting guards. Yeah, I always take some more, though. Um, but, uh, heck, if all those fellas got Tyler Oden, Oden and he could fucking freaking drop a 20-piece uh, this season for all I yeah, I mean he he could just go out there and ball out one night. I don't yeah. know. Oh, oh, fluff may get fluffy. I you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. Let me, I was going to run down the the full current roster as it stands. Uh, you know, we've talked about all the guys that have have left, and we've talked about the one signee uh, current roster as it stands today on on Monday, uh, May first, close to midnight, but. You know, as it stands right now, we've got Dante Allen returning, Christian Lander, Tyrone Marshall, Blue John. And then we have uh, walk-ons, Noah Stansberry, Tyler Oden, Jalen Dorsey. And then we've got two signees in Tegan Moore and Brandon Newman. So, like you said, we need to fill in uh, some big guys. Um, you know, another ball handler, point guard would not be a bad idea. We, we definitely have some depth and some opportunity and, and plenty of minutes to – be shopping around out there and, and trying to find some good players. I, I and I don't doubt it's going to happen. You know, we've seen Lutz and kind of the first glance at his resume was he really thrived in the transfer portal. And, you know, we were talking about the, the high caliber recruits that we had earlier with Stansberry. Our, our recruiting profile is going to change 1000%. We are not, going to recruit um, four- and five-star players, you know, straight out of high school like we were doing. You know, there for a while we got on a run of of having guys that would reclassify and come to Western a year early. We had two or three of those guys. Um, and our if our recruiting profile changes and we're just finding those diamond in the rough, those mid-major guys or P5 guys that are just overlooked like the Brandon Newman, so be it. You know, I, I think at the end of the day – all we're going to care about is winning games, not just winning games, but winning the conference, winning the conference championship, going to the NCAA tournament, and not as a not as a play-in 16 seed, um, not as a first four, but you know, having a good regular season, winning our conference tournament, and getting there as a you know, a eight, nine, ten, eleven seed. You know, we don't want to be a 14, 15, 16 seed, and just. You know, you're under the gun immediately playing a one, two, or three seed. So um, I'm okay with our, our recruiting profile changing. I know it's going to happen. I know Lutz has shown experience and ability to find those uh, portal players, and it, it's still early. It's still plenty of time. I know I, I expressed some concern, but it is far from panic for me. You know, I know that there's still plenty of players out there. I know we're still interested in guys, talking to guys, hosting guys, um, and we're going to land some, we're going to land some players and the players that we get are going to be up to the standards of Steve Lutz and what he expects and the, the high intensity, fast tempo on offense and a really 
heavy, strong defensive team. You know, and that's what I think we're going to see. And we're going to have a changing of guard of some players. We've already talked about all the defections and paving the way for a lot of newcomers. So I'm fine where we're at. You know, I know there is some concern in the fan base. There's rumblings in the fan base, people that are expressing concern. And I think rightfully so. I'm not going to say, hey, y'all shouldn't be worried because I think there is surely reason and concern there. Um, But I still choose to be optimistic. I still choose to be glass half full that, you know, this coach has not coached a game yet, and I'm not throwing the towel in on him. You know, I think he's going to find players. I think he's going to coach them up. I think we're going to win games. You know, that's the bottom line. Uh, Moving forward, we have, um, you know, a couple assistant coaches now that have been named officially uh one of those tim mccallister from georgia southern and the other one that just became official today had been rumored for a couple of days but hank plana from indian hills juco was a uh, head coach there for eight years um you know a couple of experienced guys a- again you know that juco connection could be vital for kind of filing finding that talent that maybe at a high school didn't qualify or overlooked and went juco he you you guarantee that guy's got a lot of connections in the juco world maybe finding those next great players that transfer in you know where jamarian sharp came from the juco guy came in um so tell me i guess what's your thoughts right now um i guess on where we stand with where the roster is today knowing that we have holes to fill and these two assistant coaches that we've now have officially named you know kind of what are your thoughts on them tyler i think uh i think the roster it will build itself up because western kentucky has a crap ton of history that you know and getting guys into the pros or getting guys playing overseas um i mean i think the history sells itself less just needs to kind of just push it along a little bit but uh I, i think i think we'll be fine you know this this newest uh, hire, Hank Plano, uh, I was looking over his resume and he had gotten some of his former players have went on to play in the NCAA tournament the past few years, went to major schools. I think that we we will benefit from him being on staff and, you know, just being there saying, hey, you know, why don't you come look at Western Kentucky University? You know, it's a great school great basketball history um definitely definitely looking up on that uh overall for the new coaches and new and the new roster yeah i agree and like we've kind of both have said you know there's still plenty of time to add players you know there's plenty of there and there's still plenty of players out there and good players um even looking further back you know that 2017-18 team um uh, darius thompson and dwight kobe were some late late additions i'm talking like august you know right before school started when those guys were plucked out um and joined our team as transfers so um you know especially as we get closer to graduation we're finals week now graduation coming up here soon i mean there's going to be even more players that aren't in the portal now that you know once they realize they have fulfilled their graduation requirements they're going to hit as a, a grad transfer or you know, if they get over recruited, a transfer comes in. You know, somebody's going to transfer out, and we're going to end up landing a couple more good players, some diamonds in the rough, some guys that are Steve Lutz caliber, and guys that are going to help us win ball games. You know, quite frankly, um, whether they're the the nice shiny four and five star guys, at the end of the day, that's not going to matter. You know, that's not what we were winning ball games with. You know, in the Early two, early two thousands. You know, in the nineties when we were great. You know, two thousand twelve and thirteen uh, when we had those Ray Harper runs to the NCAA tournament. Two thousand eight with Ty Rogers, Courtney Lee. I mean, we we haven't had those special moments with guys that were four and five star guys. Can it happen? Absolutely, it happens with a lot of schools every year. But it, at our level, it's always kind of been those diamonds in a rough. Those two and three star guys that have been developed and become really good and solid players. So I think plenty of those exist. You know, I think we already have some on the roster. I think Dante Allen's a really good player. 
I think Christian Lander is a, a can be a good player. He you know has shown the ability to shoot the ball well. Tyrone Marshall, you have to love his his motor. I mean, dude is a just nonstop going. Flu John, um, we know he's coming off an injury last year, getting back into shape, playing behind Jamarion. You know, there's potential there. Um, and then Brandon Newman, you know, with his former four star recruit. Um, and just that frame, that six five shooting guard. I mean, that's prototypical size. So, I I think we're gonna be fine. I, I matter of fact, I know we're gonna be fine. You know, I'm still I'm gonna be in diddle every single game. I don't care what the names uh, on the back of the jersey said. I don't care who those recruits are. You know, when when they choose and if they choose to come to Western Kentucky, and it says WKU right across the front, like my hoodie says right now, I'm cheering those guys on. You know, as long as they're here. As long as Steve Lutz is here, I'm, I'm cheering him on, and I know we're going to have really good days ahead of us. Um, obviously, there's still a lot that's going to happen between now and the roster being finalized and all those scholarship positions being fulfilled and spoken for. And and when that happens and before, you know, the basketball season begins and, you know, October, November, you know, we'll surely have um, a basketball update before the season begins. But we definitely wanted to come in and just kind of have a quick recap of just what's happened since, you know, the end of March with the disappointing season we have. Obviously, Stansberry resigning, coaching search, uh, Lutz being hired, transfers and just player movement. And just there's been a lot of stuff going on. And, you know, we had a really good episode with the spring game. We've had a lot of positive feedback from that. Um, And we definitely just wanted to catch everybody up on basketball. Um. And I think it's going to be a really good season. I know it's going to be a different season. It definitely feels different already basketball-wise. Um, you know, Usually we're coming into this part of the year with several high-level recruits, and we're just excited for, man, look at all these big names. And then we got to find out who's going to be eligible and who is actually going to be here. And I think it's going to be a little bit different this year. We're going to get some hard-nosed guys that are going to be players and are going to help us win differently than what we've done you know over the last seven years so that's kind of my final words my thought final thoughts on basketball and like I said we will circle back and follow up with another basketball episode when it's relevant um, and when there's just more to update on with roster moves as that is still remaining a fluid situation and is subject to change even as we record today so Tyler, with that said, man, I'm going to give you the mic, let you give us some final words, your thoughts on just the basketball season as it was, as it ended, unfolded, and where we are today. Give us your final words just on everything, um, and then take us the heck out of here, man. All right, well, um, you know, I think from whenever I watched Coach Lutz's uh, press conference, I could tell that he was – very hard nosed, and he demands uh, accountability, and he wants his players to play hard. And uh, that that's it's kind of a a, a refreshing to see that because this past season uh, it seemed like you know maybe that kind of went by the wayside a little bit. You know, speak that uh, incident allegedly that happened down there in, uh, during the Florida games where a player was looking on social media or a date nap or something. Um, uh, I remember that and seeing that I was like, Oh gosh. But, uh, I think, I think Western Kentucky's in, you know, it's in good hands with, with Lutz and I, I'm excited to see what he's going to bring. I'm excited for his, you know, fast paced style of offense. Um, uh, I think that's going to be amazing. Uh, but, no, I, I, I'm i excited for this roster to see what – who comes in, what, you know, what shapes up. And I just really want this team to gel. Uh, I feel like this past season maybe there was some conflict in personalities or maybe a player or two players. They just never seemed to gel. Someone always – I felt like someone thought that, they should have been a bigger star. That's just me personally, uh, from the outside looking in. Um, but I, I think this coach can get us back into the NCAA tournament. It's been forever since we've been there. I think 2015, 14, 
2012. 2012. 2012 was the last. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. We yeah. played in front of we played in front of uh, Barack Obama and uh, mm-hmm. uh, P- President Obama and the Prime Minister from England. Um, I think this uh, I think this guy can get us back there, uh, hopefully, and I'll be I'll and get us back to national relevance. And I will gladly cheer on anybody who walks into that program with Western Kentucky across their chest, just like I, I have been since. Oh gosh, forever ago. I feel like uh, I've 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 stressed more over basketball games whenever I've listened to them or been there. I feel like I've aged about twenty years, but now I'm I'm ready to get. I, it's a long wait for basketball season, but but I, I am ready for it. Ready to see what finished products out there. Uh, so I guess as I always say, Stephen, who has better than us? Hey Tyler, nobody. Go Tops. Go Tops, guys. Later.